Good evening viewers, this is Grace Changes Everything, part 309, 5th of November 2022, here in Perth, Western Australia, and the time is 12.30am in the morning. <clears throat> um, my topic tonight is interesting, because it goes back to Constantine, he made a lot of changes. Apparently he was responsible to watering down the scriptures. Um, it also led to the changes made from the Saturday Sabbath to the Sunday, which is supposedly the pagan Sunday. Uh, though I think the Jews have another day, which they would call um, the Resurrection Day or whatever. Uh, well, even though they don't believe Christ was resurrected, but they probably have another day on their calendar. Oh yeah, because of the calendar is different. Um, the dates, the days will come up differently. So, but what my, what I'm trying to say here is, <clears throat> um, Constantine was the, pr the probably the first one that proclaimed that he was God incarnated, and he didn't do it so much um, because he believed in Christianity. He was he was actually a, an antichrist against it, really. Um, but he, he knew the Christians were powerful movement upon the earth. He was a Ro Roman, you know, Constantine. I think it might have been an emperor or somebody. And uh, he conformed to Christianity to keep the peace. So it, yeah, as long as he was the leader. And he said something like, when I'm dead and gone, you won't need any God incarnated anymore. You can all be Christian and just go about your way and be saved and whatever. Of course, the Catholic Church didn't really heed to that, and they went on with their claim incarnated in the Pope as Christ, but which is blasphemy. Right? The Bible speaks against that sort of thing. Um, so he watered down Christianity, but what was the original then? If Christianity was a, a copy or a so well, not a copy, but what can I say watered down version? Then what would the original say? Well, the original was Jewish. Uh, the Torah and the Hebrew and all that um, spoke of uh, the Father of Lights, uh, a deity uh, beyond Jesus Christ. That he, Jesus truly was the Son. He wasn't God, but in that sense, he was God, but not the Father. So it's very confusing. Anyway, the Bibles were changed to a God. King James was, he was God. But if you go back to the Torah and the, um, uh, the Hebrew, and all that, find out that there is this deity, Heavenly Father. Um, and everything was, was, was Jewish. Uh, I think the Bible say, says um, the learning of the Jews, the learning, and um, it was always a learning process, and who was going to be Messiah, and how it was going to happen, everything, and the way it happened in the Bible apparently didn't exist. That Jesus Christ didn't even exist, it was just a story told. That's <clears throat> how crazy it gets. But if that's true, then we have the watered down version where there's less rules and less strict and be happy, be merry uh, for tomorrow we are saved <laughs> um, and even in the Latter-day Saint Church the Prophet Joseph Smith supposedly was Jewish and he laid out the foundation of this like a Torah like the Jewish way of receiving salvation or heaven uh, and yet Brigham Young preceded him and he turned it into Christianity yet he was racist so it's like when you think about it I mean who slaughtered the Jews you know uh, who went against the Jews I mean I mean Hitler did the Nazi party um, but even but he was associated with the Catholic Church and 
the whole Christian aspect or Christ believing aspect that Jesus was a resurrected being rose from the dead it, it was that aspect of the gospel that really attacked the Jews didn't they because they believed the Jews were cursed because they denied the Christ in the flesh if you go back to these aged texts and all that you know um, it speaks about a deity uh, even beyond Christ and then there's another aspect that Jesus now is called Yahweh or something another name and either he existed or he didn't and the gospel of love um, even that might have been watered down and I am very strong on the gospel of love but um, you could say it's a gospel of rules you know how the Jewish get all caught up in rules and regulations and the heaven that this deity spoke of is, is it, 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 it's, a, it's a heaven which you have to earn there's no grace involved it's crazy so King James comes along and a, a good king he was and he assembled it and that's the closest we have to the truth it's been around a long time the King James Bible even though that got changed the translations and all that but and we're told different aspects of how to be saved and of course Paul uh the messenger of grace who wrote half the new testament he was kept in it where all of that was not part of the original <coughs> text uh going back before king james so if you remove all of that um you're looking at an empire of the gods this is how the self-righteousness comes into it but but it, it really it it, it kind of speaks a volume volumes saying that it's all about getting back to the God as it gets very confusing and it can cause some negativity so so if Constantine changed things not only the Sabbath to Sunday which the Bible warns and says anyone who messes changes the times and the seasons let him be accursed and now the whole world went along with it and the Catholics sort of took took went along with things as well right um, though they continued on with the incarnation of Christ in the Pope where Constantine said after I'm dead and gone don't worry about it um, you know you don't have to worry about it anymore as long as I'm alive you know I'm the incarnated one so there's this crazy stuff going on and that's sort of removed from history uh, well it's, it's in history but Christians don't know about all this sort of stuff and in the in the in the deity uh, kingdom, where grace is not really sufficient because it's it's sort of like being added, that's what they believe. And then there's aspects that break away. You got the races, the Nazis. You have got all this stuff coming into it, and uh, and they mingle in because they know that there was a racism in the history, even right up to the Joseph Smith's time, or apparently after that. Bring them young, and they kind of the, the manipulate each other. It's trying to build up a kingdom empire to take over the world. Um, Joseph Smith actually baptized an African American, and he was chastised for it um, because then he found out by revelation that the African seed of Cain, the first murderer, could not receive priesthood and be sealed in the temple for time and all eternity. And then it was a racist thing that this would always be so that was spoken by the next prophet, Brigham Young, uh, and death on the spot to any white man who marry a black woman or a black woman marry a white man. <coughs> um, <coughs> there was a curse. <coughs> and that would always be so, never be changed, and it did. It got changed by revelation in modern, modern day, uh, this last century. <coughs> Which is a good thing, but it's sort of like an apostasy. Prophets disagreeing with each other, not in harmony with each other. But anyway, going back to the before the King James, we, the King James is the most correct we have, as far as what we have. If you go back further, it it gets away from Jesus being actually existing. It's more of a I don't know. It it gets very complicated. Um, there are texts that say he was God, and there's other texts that say then it's become a God, and um, 
In other words, what it's saying is that God is God. And uh, the parable was Jesus Christ. It never existed. That's even more confusing. And it was just a way to show us um, how to be a good person. And the pure in heart shall see God. But the grace was was not really sufficient. And that's why they get hung up on scripture that is older than King James. Right back. Because it doesn't really mention grace or sufficient. And of course that was that's uh, that was uh, after Christ's crucifixion, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean the, the Torah was anyway. I think the Torah well the Torah's been around a long time. Okay. Right up to present day. Uh, Hebrew and all that, that was before and then it, yeah, and the Jews sort of copied it and they did they may put it into Torah and somehow it just sort of left Jesus out sort of thing um, and the grace certainly wasn't wasn't sufficient it wasn't involved to, to return home to God or Heavenly Father right? and I think that's why Latter-day Saints don't really rave on about grace so much and they think you have to earn it and all this climb halfway up the ladder before atonement and grace kicks in because they know going back to the deity of the of the gods you can sp you can say right beyond christ my goodness um it's not essential for exaltation i would preach salvation by grace is the start that's the most important and then works come after that priesthood's which can maybe lead to exaltation if it's true, but there's no evidence, right? But no, not even grace is sufficient, except the grace of resurrection for all good, the bad, and the ugly. See how confusing it gets? And if you're going to go back to original texts uh, before King James, you, you know, um, it's going to turn you into a... What's the word? Uh, what's anti-Semitic? Um, oh... The, what it means. I've got to study this. This is very uh, heavy stuff. Um, basically, <clears throat> human beings be are literally like gods, I suppose. So they can rule and reign, even here on earth, as in heaven. And, and Jesus Christ is more like a map giver. Uh, he's not really God, is he? It, it, it changes things. And if he is God, then he then the parable is that he didn't walk among us physically, but only spiritually. And even the Jehovah's Witnesses say that Jesus Christ has come back spiritually. The uh, the Church of a Mighty God in China says Jesus Christ is walking among us spiritually. He's already returned. There's no flesh. There's no magical appearance in the sky. Nothing. It's just either you're ready or you're not. It's just crazy stuff. And grace is very simple, it just makes a lot of sense, but, you know, um, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Of course, the, uh, the chicken came first, the egg came later. It's like the Adam and Eve thing, too. Uh, but, you know, look, whatever brings you closer to the Lord or God, uh, be, be it true or not, you know, we don't want contention, but the Bible does say come and reason together. Contend, not so much contention, but... You need to stand up and be counted. Um, the purity within your heart is what's going to lead to see God. And if you go back to the aged text, you don't have to rely on Christ's righteousness to to deliver you. You, you rely on yourself. Your, your own righteousness. See, this is all Old Testament. And even further back, like, oh, well, the other... The other texts lost, uh, well, not there, there are lost books that talk about the purity, but not the rules and regulations. That's the Gnostics, which which I got a lot of respect for, but then they ended up adding reincarnation, and everything. So it got messed up. My goodness! And of course, the Gnostics um, were slaughtered by the Catholic Church, women and children as well, because they had the lost fourteen books that the Catholics removed from the from the Bible, and they were refused to marry by Catholic authority. And they went to guide with their woman, and they received revelation to shack up, which, like we call it de facto, here living together, and that was justified as a marriage in God's eyes. And then they make love and have children, but more so, 
they wouldn't spill the seed unless it was for procreational purposes. So it wasn't a lustful marriage. But there was no piece of paper, nothing official. See, that's the pure aspect. The Gnostics, interesting, because that means if you really love somebody and there's no priest to marry or and you're stuck on a desert isle or something, you know, you can make it a marriage. But what happens if that person who's stuck on the desert isle has is, is already got a wife? Is there for 20 years, see? Is that a sin, curse sin? Well, it's a sin, but it's not a curse sin. It's, you're stuck there for 20 years. And you have a child running around like a monkey on the island. It's just crazy. And then he goes back to his wife. His wife forgives him and says, oh, well, you're not accountable. That You were stuck there for 20 years. She takes him back. He goes back to her, most likely. And then if she says, no, you're cursed, you're a sinner, you should have no rights to commit adultery with that native woman or whoever you was in the plane crash, maybe, or shipwreck. Uh, 20 years and you should not have had sex with anyone you know um, and he runs straight back to his lover's arms who probably had a child as well and that's the end of the marriage divorce see these situations um, sin and curse sin and it, it gets really really complicated um, you know you can be accused of justifying spiritual adultery right uh, not, uh, sorry, uh, not justifying spiritual adultery. Is there such a thing? A spiritual adultery is not having sex with anyone, but you get closer to somebody where you might, your spouse may be comp not only sexless, or, well, or could be, um, but basically spiritually dead. You're not evenly yoked in Christ. You're not going to go and sleep around, and you end up getting really close to somebody, but you never have sex, and you've got you're really strong in that sense. Um, as somebody like a soulmate that you you just never got to marry, you missed out. You just oh, it's crazy. Is that sp such thing as spiritual adultery, sin or curse sin? I, I definitely don't think it's a curse sin, but these situations are ha that happens, right? And um, under the this 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 higher law, um, which you could say didn't really exist uh, in it, uh, presented by a savior. Uh, it, ex it it was what it was before the foundations of the world, which was a kind of a priesthood thing, but more of a hierarchy of the gods. Um, and Jesus Christ's mission was, uh, you know, the whole oneness of it all and purity and love and all that, which makes a lot of sense. And if that's a watered-down version, I think it's a better version, personally. But just like the Latter-day Saint Church today, they repented of racism. That's a better version, but yet it's apostasy because it's broken away from the original foundation. But they will say it's all part of the one. But the Bible does say if prophets disagree with one another and make prophecies that don't come true, then it's it's it, it's false prophets. But anyway, breakaways, apostasies, and um, you know, and in the end. The pure in heart will see God anyway, so it doesn't matter what church you're in then. But, but we're still talking single salvation. There's no married salvation. That was never restored. Well, if that was restored, it came from Adam and Eve, up maybe up to the time of Enoch. That's the Latter Day Saint foundation restored. But there's no no proof of this. And it was restored by Peter, James, and John, who never held the Levitic Levitical priesthood, which by bloodline they must to have that authority unless Jesus Christ secretly gave them the uh, the authority and then res then restored the gospel by laying on a hands to the prophet Joseph Smith of the Latter-day Saint Church, Mormon Church. But again, you got to go back, go back to the gods. And this is where ancient history and strange texts that were written before what we have today, if you go on that, <coughs> you're removing the grace and you're, you're starting to see the aspect of this sovereign God that uh, wants you to live 613 laws and yet grace will teach that Jesus Christ is doing it all for us finished works upon the cross and it's his mercy and his righteousness not our righteousness none good but God Jesus said but if Jesus Christ never existed <laughs> and it was just a parable then we're, then we're, we're imagining a phantom 
to carry us through tribulation and the whole grace is a made up thing and yet it's just a way of chilling out and having some relief from the pressure of trying to live up to the deities the gods and that's why all these crazy people join churches like that because they 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 understand well some of them understand that it's all about world takeover be it a spiritual um reality of a heaven or it's just a spiritual warfare of demons or there's no such thing as a spiritual heaven but only that which exists now on earth and once you're dead you're dead so you can sort of say it's like a glorified atheism with spiritual attributes see see this is why <clears throat> In modern day, we have all these churches that are trying to get away from that. A lot of them are trying to get away from that. Some are trying to bring it all back. And those who are, are bring back the foundations of the gods, and then you get the Nazis, you get all these strange people coming into those sort of Gospels because it's a way of filtering through, manipulating, and playing with this fire, and then take over the world. It's, it's, it's one world government, communism, all sorts of things can happen. United order. Later day saints call that the United Order. You hand over everything to the church. You've been paying 10% tithing. Now you give everything to the church and the church give you back what you need. Of course, if it's a cashless society under communism, there's going to be no money. So, But, but they will protect you because you're part of like an Illuminati. It's, it's really weird. And they will protect its members then. And talk about $100 billion in the bank, saving it for a rainy day. They're going to need it then, won't they? Has anyone bombed the... Uh, Mormon temples? No. They're in they're in allegiance with the gods of the gods of power and whatever. But if it is true and the whole grace thing is watered down as a phantom, as a parable, would never really all this whole thing never existed as literal. This literal. Uh, that leaves you with no other position but to aim for the gods, the godhood. And the chosen few, it's a bit like uh, those little tortoises, baby ones running to get into the ocean. They're born, they're hatched on the uh, the beach, and then they're running off to the to the uh, water to swim away. And all the vultures come down and start eating them. The ones some get away, some don't. Wow! And then you're like in the war, you're running in the fields. One gets stepped on a landmine, and one gets shot, and boom down they go you know and some get through to the end and you know remember that movie uh dances with wolves with uh, kevin costner he had the flag and he was just brave he got on the horse and he he closed his eyes put his arms up with the flag and he just comes straight to the enemy and they missed him every bullet missed him and then the movie started it was an amazing movie he ended up uh, with the american indian girlfriend of his and they he turned indian which means indian and they and they persecuted him, and the civil, uh, the civil cavalry hunted him down and tortured him because <coughs> he had gone the other way. <laughs> well, that's how the the deity of the gods and their doctrine and the people are thinking grace is gone the other way, which was all filtered down through Constantine, who who watered it down to make Christians all happy go lucky casual and more free though the catholic church was a foundation breakaway or attached to the constantine constitution you can say constantine constitution um and then it, as, as as modern history it, it broke down even further and priesthoods were not necessary and then it was just grace and of course there are priesthood religions today latter-day saints is one of them because it was levitical and it, it but <laughs> it was never catholic priesthood anyway so you see the confusion and does the spirit leave well the spirit doesn't really leave you leave it so how do you feel with me telling all of that it, it it brings a bit of darkness to your soul does it bring the father of lights into your soul spirit whatever you see what i'm getting at if if, if it's all about this deity well there's another text agent text in the samaritan so that deity was the the aliens, the, the the powerful ones, the sky people, the aliens, and they created the first Adam. And they called himself God. Let us go down and create man. And then a chapter or so later it says, Lord God, which was Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Yahweh, whatever, 
and he breathed not only soul but in spirit and gave us the spark because we come from Adam and Eve and the others come from Adam and Lilith. So there's another text. It gets crazier. And then there were like a, a 12 accounts of resurrections before Christ or leading up to Christ. Someone dying, resurrected in three days. And all these things written down in history. And then, of course, when Jesus was born, no one believes it. Like those people from those from that seed will say, oh, well, that's just another Christ. Just another Christ. But he was the Christ, wasn't he? But accordingly to the foundations of the deity of the gods from the original text um, of how religion was established in the first place, before it was watered down, Jesus Christ was never existed. It was just a, a made-up story, and it was a, a one that sold people in, to become Christian. And that's Constantine's uh, mission was to make everybody Christian. Right? Give them a little bit of freedom that way. Where the devil in heaven, he said, oh, if you choose me, I will make him righteous. But Jesus Christ said, no, I will give him free agency. See how it... But the whole Constantine thing made it even better. It made it lighter, where the yoke got lighter, not heavier. Right? <laughs> he brought in Christianity. He's the one that, well, if God used him or it was all fake or whatever, it doesn't matter. He did it. He's the one that joined up with the Christians, even though in his mindset he, he knew it, it was about the deity of the gods, the gods, <clears throat> and he just did it deliberately because they knew he knew Christians were going to take over the earth, so he watered it down. But the Catholic Church kept its power because that <laughs> was prophecy anyway, uh, for the wrong reasons. <clears throat> so there you go. There's a little bit of history. There's no proof, no evidence. I don't claim to know anything. It's all speculation, brothers and sisters. Um, but you've got to ask yourself what you feel. But then again, it's not almost not always what you feel. It's, it's the conviction you have. Some people have dreams and visions and they see the light and so bright. Brighter than the noonday sun. They're not going to die, deny those visions for some dark doctrines, even if it came before the original. Uh, sorry, it came before the King James Bible. Or the, you know, and you got the Dead Sea Scrolls, which very much match <coughs> uh, prophecies. I think it's in Isaiah or something. Proph the prophecies and more testified of Jesus Christ actually being a real person. So you got the Dead Sea Scrolls, and they're in the, they're on the side of the Christians. And there's, and there's other books, but you you go back to really go back to original foundations. Um, it's going to speak more phantoms about what's coming in this world as prophecy. They prophesy things, which does happen, and it's all about world takeover. It's, it's all to do with like the Roman Empire, and the Catholic Church is part of a Roman Empire, right? They claim to be Christian. They claim to believe in Jesus Christ, just as uh, demons believe in Jesus Christ, or soul, fallen condition, con uh, mind control, manipulation. But it's all, but Christians know that's in spirit that Christ does it all. The finished works upon the cross, and it's a higher level. We're getting out of soul. We're getting away from that old covenant of Adam and Eve, and taking off our fig leaf, and then putting on the lamb skin, and become and into the body of Christ. But this is again, this is the Christian freedom that came among us and it sets us free as Paul would say and it seems to be the golden truth and the golden rule as well love others as uh, uh, treat others how you would want them to treat you and all this right so it would be like saying the truth came later and it was never originally the truth in the first place or the truth that has come later was never the truth and the original was the deity of the gods which means, I'm sorry to say this, it would mean atheism. It means it was never anything to do with spiritual heaven. It was just to do with the setting up of the control and manipulations of men running this world. The elite and, the, and all the secret societies and everything. So it's very complicated. The only way I can continue on down this path is because of my angel experience when I was age seven, near death, all right? And I saw that light, and it's very bright. I've never seen a light brighter. And the closest to that bright light was in the Latter-day Saint Church. I can't deny that. It's something bright about it. But that light didn't deny uh, a Heavenly Mother even. Because I used to, when I was a kid, I used to be very homophobic because my, my father was very, very brutal 
especially emotionally, though I got a few whacks over the head for talking about God, anything spiritual, he didn't like that. He, he, he was really into soul logic. And <clears throat> I needed an escape. Uh, and and I was comforted by this light and this brightness. And then I had the ac I had the accident as well, which ma it manifested even brighter, and it carried me through my life. And it made predictions, and it all came true. What's going on here? And it goes, it 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 basically. I think the Bible says no one no one can really interpret the scriptures, but in a sense, the the whole the whole doctrine and all of that becomes watered down for the better. That. The lake of fire or the outer darkness does exist for those who deny the Holy Spirit. And that hell was created for devil and his demons, mainly. We all go somewhere, and if we're not with Christ, that would be hell. And if we're in a soul prison, if that exists, which I believe it does, um, and we don't care about heaven, we've done all these bad things and not repented, well, the, the hell is that they get to see the light. They get to see the heaven that they missed out on, and that blinds them. That burns them up like hell. It's, you're on fire with with torture. And then you thrust it back down to hell, whence there is no return. In that sense, is hell. If it's like a fire, or it's just somewhere out of darkness, or it's just some lower aspect of heaven where, you know, you're lucky if you can get the suck on an apple. So this is the complication. This is why people hate religion. It's just it gets pretty scary because you're talking original foundation doctrines um, can make Jesus Christ look like he didn't exist. It was just all uh, made up, phantom, parable, whatever. Okay, and lot and there was a lot of parables in the Bible, like the Good Samaritan. Apparently they didn't even exist, but Jesus uses an example about the Levite priest being stuck up proud, even though he was the priesthood of Jesus Christ. He gave that same priesthood Levitical to Moses, uh, but he wasn't against the priesthood. He was against the people operating it. And Good Samaritan stopped to help the wounded man while the Levite priest and the rabbi walked on by to get the temple and left him for dead. The Christian example was the Good Samaritan, the real Christian. It was made up. It was, it was part of the Bible it apparently never existed it was just a parable so all these parables right so which side are you on which camp are you in you know in the camp where it's, all, it's practically atheism but you believe in all the power of the foundation as a world takeover or do you believe in, the, in a heaven where there's deities and gods just like the latter saints believe there are many gods oh my goodness um or you believe in Constantine, had, who had changed the deity of the gods and put it into an aspect of um, watered-down Christianity, and they could be, they could have their grace, they can have whatever, just get along, be at peace, you know. Uh, as long as I'm in power, Constantine said, I'm the incarnated Christ in the in the flesh, and when I'm dead, don't worry about it. That's the end of it. But of course, the Catholic Church continued on uh, the Roman Empire of the Catholic Church. Christ incarnated and it, it got all messed up my goodness it got all messed up and then Peter James and John restored the, the real priesthood and yet they weren't Levites by bloodline and that's another mess up because the Bible says you cannot hold that priesthood without being a bloodline Levite true priesthood compared to the Catholic counterfeit priesthood but both messed up I wonder why most people accept the grace gospel because it's just simple and it supposedly saves you. But if Jesus Christ never existed, where the hell are we going to end up? <laughs> All right, so my conviction, my conviction <clears throat> is the fact that my angel made predictions that all came true and ones to set in the future. The light is brighter than the noonday sun. It's so bright, it can blind you if you're not ready for it. But say worthy, you're worthy in spirit automatically. You're not worthy in soul to even see. And that's they say Joseph Smith was the only person in history that actually saw God or God the Father and, and all that. Uh Jesus Christ, uh and his eyes were changed and all this sort of thing. Supernaturally changed. Moses only saw a burning bush. Um so <laughs> crazy things. Crazy things. And of course Jesus did say if if Jesus you're gonna say Jesus existed, he said we were doing more miracles than him. In the later day, he didn't do as many miracles as he could have, but he wanted people to have faith and learn about the love principle, the law of love, the gospel of love. Right? 
So just to finish up, brothers and sisters, I've given you a lot of confusion tonight. I don't mean to confuse you. It's supposed to be a house of order, uh, not a house of confusion. All right? So all I can say, as many New Age books out there that are probably misleading a lot of them, but they bring you to the light of yourself, your truth, in within you. And it's basic, basically what it's saying is if you cannot believe in yourself, so if you cannot believe in Jesus Christ, at least believe in yourself. It'll lead you to the same place. Well, almost the same place. I would preach as a Christian, unless you accept Jesus Christ, you, 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 you're just off off course by a little bit. But if you put a, put a boat on the water and it's got a rudder, you know, at the back, and it goes off just by that much, it can be thousands of miles off course. So a lot of the New Ages are off course. And of course, they would say that it's all that all roads lead to Rome, or all, all roads lead to heaven, and all roads lead to reincarnation, and recycle, and you, you just think about it. And they wonder why the Muslims are laughing, because Christianity is divided in so many parts, it's just crazy, and yet Muslims basically have two break, one breakaway, to my knowledge, and that is, they believe in Allah, that's it, direct to Allah, Jesus was a prophet, he, was, he wasn't the prophet of prophets, or they're out of these, the, the, what law is it? The Shah law? The word. And they've added these extra laws, just like Latter day Saint Church added extra laws, because the Book of Mormon didn't say anything about word of wisdom, which is no tea, coffee, smoke, and drink. That all came later. And of course, prophets are above the scriptures, and when they speak, the thinking has been done. Amen. Shut up and listen, you know, even though it says different things to what the Book of Mormon said. And yet people get up and say, this is the true book. This is the lost stick of Joseph, which the Bible foretold in Ezekiel 37, 15 and 19. Judah is the Bible. Stick of Joseph uh, is supposing the Book of Mormon joined together, become one. Then it wouldn't be another false, it wouldn't be a false angel preaching a false gospel. And Isaiah 29, a lost book, would cry from the dust. All right, all amazing stuff. But the fruits of the Spirit is, is love and treating one another. And where's that going to lead you? Does it lead you to everlasting life? That's the resurrection. Or eternal life with God? Or does it lead you to death and that's it? And you've lived this good life. Uh, and yet people are really wicked and everything, done all the wrong things. And they don't have an existence hereafter and they get away with murder? My dad was as a great man. He said, Dad had six months, say if Dad had six months to live, I said to him, what, would you go and cash in all your credit cards and just spend it, go around the world and not pay it back? You know, you know you're going to die. He, he said, I wouldn't do it. It's principle. It's honesty. And it's dishonest to do that. Even if I had six months to live, I wouldn't cash, all, cash credit. And plus, he doesn't have credit cards. He never believed in that. He's a cash man. He wouldn't even touch it. And some people got thousands of dollars, like 30, I mean, I used to have thirty to $50,000 in credit cards. Talk about the debt. Owed a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Started gambling. Try and pay me debts up, and that and that worked for a while. And then <laughs> I stuffed up. Look, I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm a sinner, and you know I believe I've been forgiven for a lot of things. And uh, basically, um, my everyday sins, if, if if you call it a sin, got an Irish temper. I swear sometimes. Sometimes I go into anger stay there for a few days but never more than three days normally and if i really am stuffed up and i can't even pray I'll just, if i can't pray I'll, I'll speak in these crazy tongues some you know and i'll thank the lord until i get english words come out of my mouth it's just babble and sometimes i don't feel it's babble i feel it really is rebuking and some of those are or rebuking the devil that is and sometimes those words you can look it up in the dictionary. Some of the words come out. You look it up or in a foreign language and it means what it means. It's crazy where it's coming from. But anyway, that's just... Sometimes I rebuke myself. My own spirit rebuke my own soul. Because everybody's soul is fallen conditioned sinners. And when, when someone makes the change and yet you get all your past is brought up about all your sins you've done, that's someone else's soul. They haven't taken the speck out of their eye. As, but they take it out of your eye. It's just soul attacking soul. Negative soul jealousy is in the soul. Demons live in the soul. Uh, ego lives in the soul. Pride, gossip, backbiting, slandering, bearing false witness, racism, discrimination. It's all in the soul and the soul will burn itself out and not even exist after a thousand years max or whatever in the soul world, soul prison. And then spirit goes to the light or some part of the light. 
be it a bright light or or a dimmer light and the ones who deny the Holy Spirit after walk and talk and seeing God and angels like Cain and his, his Judas Iscariot end up in the outer darkness or you could say lack of fire which gospel? well the Bible King James says the gospel of grace is sufficient Latter-day Saint gospel is the gospel of the restored priesthood is sufficient I would say gospel grace first activate grace before the works and the priesthood that could that could be a combination of the Ezekiel prophecy of uh, stick of Judah the Bible and the stick of Joseph right and then you've got these ten other lost tribes somewhere scattered as well and oh my goodness and they've got brass plates and all sorts of things coming up that's been prophesied in the Latter-day Saint Church and they've got a message to say one day in the future but the gold plates was the Book of Mormon the papyrus or the, the one written down on scrolls was the Bible and oh and the Jews have got their Torah, uh, the Muslims have got their Quran, <coughs> and the Brahmins have got their book. They talk about a blue God, and some of them told me when I was in India, Krishna is Christ, appearing incarnated in a form, not in the Pope, in his own form as a blue God, preaching to strange people in, a in Asia, because he said to his apostles or disciples, don't go into Asia, it's, it's strange, it's weird. But he did it. He did remember he disappeared before he came back and done his three year mission ministry preaching a, a gospel which was different to the biblical he was preaching a a gospel to the hindu to the brahmins and then of course the chinese whispers or you could say it got watered down and monkey gods and all sorts of things start started to add to the elephant gods apparently it was all pure once and it all got messed up <laughs> all these supernatural events oh it's amazing uh you want to be at peace <laughs> <laughs> you've got to go deep within yourself the kingdom of God is within the word is written upon your heart get out of your head into your heart look uh, the Buddhists have got to make some sense but they're in the soul because I believe if you're in spirit you don't deny the Christ so wherever they go whatever peaceful place transcendental transcendental uh, soul plane astral plane I don't believe that's really heaven I believe it's some sort of in between place which is nice it's peaceful it's better than straight out hell <laughs> and they make their peace and correct their karma and negativities and things look where are you going to end up oh my goodness and even there, even if there is there a place they end up or you just sleep and that's the end of it like uh, seven day Adventists believe that when you die there's no soul the soul sleeps automatically and you wake up either resurrected as mortal or immortal and if you wake up mortal you haven't made it but you get to live a hundred years knowing you're going to be terminated and never exist again there's no burning in hell all fires go out they say and then you're going to fight again with armies against the kingdom of God 1500 miles wide high 1500 miles wide big castle thing and uh, then they they get terminated and as they being terminated they you know oh this is it I'm never going to live again but they get to live another hundred years up age of a tree oh my goodness Job when is this as I said they preach there's no heaven 144,000, they're the only ones in heaven ruling and reign. They come to earth as the government, which they will be, but we got no chance of getting to heaven. Yet they knock on doors to try and get people to become Jehovah's Witnesses, and they don't even promise heaven. But they do believe in the thousand year millennium of peace, which will happen, building homes and everything, living like as families. And then after that, <coughs> they stay on earth, and it's they're not really in heaven, they're just on earth. Lay thy saints be this earth will be changed into the golden sun, bigger than the sun, brighter than the sun we see, crystal glass, pure, and the old earth will be done away with and renewed. And ah, oh, Seventh Day Venice believe the kingdom of God will never touch this earth. It, it, like City of Enoch, it'll just hover in the sky. Lay thy saints believe will actually literally come down upon this earth. And of course, the the Muslims have got their belief and their story, and they believe in the genies and all the magic that's going on there. Um, that the genies are actually there's the good guys a lot of them are the good guys you know uh, where most Christians say it's all just demonic it's just all deception and the, and the Jews just basically intellectually so smart so clever and yet they miss the resurrection of Christ but then again go back to the original foundation the gods and Jesus Christ is a God he's a prophet and he there was no and 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 they don't even believe he really came in the first place right and then there's the old old texts going back that um, 
or Yahweh, you could say, is God. But Yahweh and Jesus Christ are posting to the same person. But then that can be divided, and Yahweh is completely different. And this strange text out there, all right? The Jews speak very highly of Yahweh, all right? The God, not a God, and but the Son of God. And he will come in glory. He won't come as a man on a donkey in flesh and blood. You see how it gets confusing? Anyway, it's been 45 minutes. I've got to finish up. This is a very indoctrinal video. And it's probably quite boring to some people. And other people, it could be very intellectually stimulating. But thank you for listening. <coughs> that is why people get very confused about religion. And it becomes a, a house of confusion rather than a house of order. What you're going to believe? Or believe in nothing? As my, one of my mates said... I'm having more fun going to hell than going to heaven. And if hell does exist, it won't be fun once you get there. And that's true, you know. You can have more fun going to hell. Highway to heaven, ACDC, Australian band, who, whose ashes were scattered just near my grandmother's grave in a place called Fremantle. <clears throat> and if there's no life after death, then uh, highway to hell doesn't really matter then, does it? <clears throat> Basically, on your deathbed, the brain takes eight minutes to die which is equivalent by uh, equivalent to two, even new neuroscientists will say this new, new neurologist forgive my grammar um, eight minutes is about two years so basically all the demons and all the torture for your murders and all your crimes it, you're tortured for two years while your brain's dying in eight minutes and that's it no accountability no sentence to hell nothing but during that time it's so frightening that's two years of being tortured because something built within us you will pay for your crimes you will pay for your sins it's all locked in even if you don't believe in god or nothing these hallucinations take place all right <clears throat> i met archie martin the most one of the richest guys in australia he's like a dick smith you know all the electronics and stuff he was so rich and he didn't even make a bond with his kids his sons and they wouldn't even visit him in hospital three days he had to live and i was a priest giving him a blessing at the time and he said oh if i had my life over again stuff money oh i've lost my kids i lost my family and he was hallucinating with demons and everything attacking him and he wasn't even a christian he doesn't even believe and what's going on here oh what's all this who's that person standing over there with a big oh he's gonna st he's gonna put a, st a pitchfork up my ass you know it's just crazy and it was going on and on and on the nurses had to calm him down that's your hell right there. If, if there's no life after death, it's still going to be a terrible death. It's called the sting of death. There is going to be justice somehow. But, according to the Bible, <coughs> well, the King James anyway, uh, you, you spend eternity in hell. And you do wake up. And that's even worse, because he's scary. You, won't, you, 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 you wake up and you can't, you can't get back. And remember that movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze? A lovely actor he was. He died of... Um, how was it? Uh, pancreas cancer. And remember, he got he was he was killed by accidentally, and he was in love with that girl. Who was her name? Demi Demi Moore. Was that what? Beautiful actress. And uh, he woke up in bed, and he went to hug her, and she's a piece of wood. And he he was trying to he was trying to hug the, his woman that he loved, and she turned into she was this piece of wood because she he was dead and she was still alive and everything all got messed up how frightening is that if your dreams you just wake up turning light switches on and no light comes on you're in the sales you're walking around and you just can't get a light yeah it's very demonic very frightening can you imagine just spending hell like that no light whoa just can't find a light switch and you just you know something's not right here where's the light you're, you're looking for the light so even the worst criminals the worst sinners in history that never repented will be looking for the light and they can't find it they'll feel cold they'll separate it from their father and they realize they did have a father see this is if <laughs> i can only go on my angel it keeps coming back and forward and i have to say i'm not going to deny my angel i'm not going to not deny the grace and after the grace if there's anything any other aspect of truth i would accept levitical priesthood even though it led jesus christ crucified to the cross oh my goodness because of the bad operation of it. I know it wasn't Catholic priesthood. It's a counterfeit. And it was never popes. It was prophets. But that very priesthood. The authority to bind and seal on earth. Will be in heaven. Bound in heaven. <clears throat> if all of that is true. Then that's just as important as the grace. But grace comes first. And if none of that is true. 
So help us God. <laughs> but I'll have an angel encounter, and if I didn't have my angel encounter, who knows? Could end up an atheist. And that's not going to happen. Because I've had a supernatural encounter. And I know there's a lot of things in the Bible that are parables. And if we take it literally, we end up insane. All right? God is mercy. God is love. Justice will not rob mercy, and mercy will not rob justice. Yet in religion, mercy, ju justice can rob mercy. You can be, you can be booted out like I was for seven years over nothing. Some in injustice that happened to me, and there's no accountability for those bishops and priests, state presidents, and there's no apologies ever. And if you write to the headquarters of the church, you get no reply. Suffer, baby, suffer. <laughs> Uh, the fittest sh shall survive, just like those little tor tortoises running into the into the ocean. The, 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 some get to make it, and others get eaten by vultures. That's what happens. Some of us make it, some of us don't. It's the luck of the draw. That's the world's view on it, atheist view on it, scientist view on it, even just luck or laws and physics of it all. <laughs> The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. It just goes on and on and on and on. Well, I hope there is justice and I hope there is mercy. And I can only say that I've got a merciful angel, led me into religion, then led me out of it, found the grace, going back, come back, find out that it hardly works, but it's very difficult to mix the two together because it's a complete contradiction. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, would turn over in his grave because he's the one that was opposed it, even though he was the Levitical and he, had, he was like, had the authority and execute and everything. He had the priesthood law, and yet he chastised Peter uh, for being under the law because now he was commissioned for the grace, Paul. And uh, Peter had a hard time understanding him. You see, the whole thing fulfilled, the law fulfilled, and yet it's all come back, right? It's all come back. Why would God do that? Well, I've only got one answer. There's a there's two heavens, well, there's three heavens, but the, that's the two heavens where Christ will be. The heaven of exaltation, the heaven of salvation by grace, single and sexless, the bride of the bridegroom, uh, singing praises and hymns forever in that heaven. And the other heaven, exaltation, where, yeah, because we're all priests under the royal high priest, none after royal high priest, but we are priests and we're gods in embryo. All that the Father have become joined hers with Jesus Christ. And finally, I'll say, Christians believe that that applies to them, single and sexless. And the Latter-day Saints, Mormons, will believe you have to be married on this earth. No marriage is in heaven, though. There's no ceremony to become gods and have that rule and reign in heaven and other worlds, other planets, other life forms, creating your own spiritual and the populate worlds without number. All the blessings of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob be upon you and your prosperity and your eternity and as numerous as the stars and that goes beyond prosper pros uh, prosperity. <coughs> it goes into the realm of creating your own spiritual and the populate worlds without number and the priesthood can creating all this and the wife is making love to get in some way without lust uh, to create all these billions of spirits and you're going to need more than one wife you're going to have to have a lot of wives to do that a lot of queens in heaven the deity of the gods lots of lots of queens a lot of polygamy going on there yet it's been stopped here only because the civil law stopped it otherwise it would still be happening I can assure you it's on the constitution and they believe that they believe that they know what's going to happen hereafter Every high priest who's been a bishop, even if he's released, gets the polygamy. But the rest don't. But the rest are thinking, oh, I'm going to get it too. I'm going to get it too. We're all going to get this seven wives thing. But no, you look study the, study it. No, there's a certain select few get that. And the others get bugger all. <laughs> they get one wife. That's fair enough. Hey, one wife's enough. So that's it. That's all i got to say. <clears throat> that's a bit of history of a crazy past over the centuries. And you're going to have to pick your level, and that's your bullshit. I'll say it again. Pick your level, and that's your bullshit. I'll say it one more time. Pick your level, and that's your bullshit. <laughs> Glory to God, my angel, the brightest of all the light. And I know Satan can appear as, a, as an angel of deception of light. You show me a brighter light, and I'll be part of that. Join a, join a, join a cult. <laughs> No, I've got the light, and I don't even need religion anymore. It led me into religion, it led me out of it, 
I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All going home, not one lost, Jesus said. That's how much he loved us. Just to believe in him. First Corinthians chapter 15, 1 to 4, that he, he died, he was buried, rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures, and to keep this in memory, shall be eternal life. That was it. That's the gospel, Corinthians. Paul gave us a gospel to know the truth to set us free. And the secret is to go into spirit. Get out of this fallen condition of soul. Go into spirit where all the in spiritual intelligence that we have already know Christ or come to know Christ in the soul where we're forever learning, striving, earning heaven, believing in Christ just as the demons do. This is the Christian aspect. I love it. If conscious time had anything to do with this, well, God used him. God used a crazy person to make to tell the truth. 99 truths to get across one lie because he claimed that he was God incarnated. You see, God can use whack jobs. God can use crazy people even to speak the truth when they don't even know they're speaking the truth. They can make something up and it'll be right. Just like the Sunday is, the, is not the Saturday, it's not the true Sabbath, but yet it represents the resurrection day. So it, it kind of worked out, didn't it? God is God and they finally finish up in that movie um, I think it was Ten Commandments when the uh, all the Egyptians got swallowed up in the army and the Pharaoh sat back on his throne his wife said you're useless you weak you, you lost all your men I said you, you didn't pray hard enough to the to Pharaoh's God and 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 of course this bald-headed famous actor I can't remember his name is he died of lung cancer he said oh don't smoke those adverts on TV because he died of smoking and he said to his wife Moses God is God Moses snakes were eat uh, Moses rod that turned into a snake ate the Egyptian wizard snakes that also they put a rod down and it turned into snakes and the king looked back and said whoa Moses God is God his power was greater than the Egyptian wizard powers and all the witchcraft and all the occult of the world, the alchemy and all the gods, the gods, the deity of the gods. Moses' God, the Hebrew God, was the God. And even if that came down the lineage and there was other deity God doctrines before that, weird enough, weird enough, and God allowed it, God used crazy people to spin it but it turned out the truth. You think about that twist of uh, mentality. All right? And then you got the God of Adam and Lilith and the alien civilization having sex with animals, apes, and what else? Uh, the, well, maybe the giants. Well, they probably they could have come through Cain, uh, Eve's first son, who, who murdered Abel. But the, the United States Saints say he was the first black person in the world because he killed Abel. He got turned into a, to a to black, dark skin. <laughs> Uh, so yeah but the second God Lord God divinity right there Jesus Christ Jehovah and that's the God that put spirit into us the spark but the other God just give us a kick up the backside and, and activated the soul breathed soul into us and now most people follow after the first God who he's, we've got souls but we don't have spirits any born again Christians out there who believe we have spirits soul and body Amen, brother. Amen, sister. All right? Because that's what I believe. I testify of that. And I'm sticking with that. And as I believe that, my spirit transports through space and time, through wormholes, everything. And I have this deliverance. And I see the glory of God through my spirit. And I know it. And I feel it. And I have a conviction of it. And I don't care uh, how the doctrines got here. Or if it was watered down by Constantine. I don't care. All I know is that God delivered it in a strange way through the through the crazy behavior of some of these people who thought they were trying to trick us, telling us bullshit, and it turned out to be the truth. That's my testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.